You know the old saying, behind every good man there's a great woman. Well, Pasadena is no different, and Mayor Jeff Wagner will be the first to tell you that. He and his wife, Jenny, have been married 19 years, and she joins us today. We're going to get to know Jenny Wagner. Welcome. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Good to see you. You are a Pasadena fixture in your own right. In fact, you beat him here because you've always been here. Yes. Tell me about growing up in Pasadena. Yes. Um, well, I've been here 53 years. I uh, grew up in Pasadena. I grew up not too far from here on Monroe Drive, about three blocks from here. I've uh, been here obviously all my life. Um, I laugh and say I've only lived in three houses in my whole life and that was all three here in Pasadena. My parents came in 49 and uh, I'm real proud of that. My father passed away when I was 16 so I've missed out on him but I still continue to visit with people that worked with him, that knew him, that were our neighbors and some people I still meet that I didn't meet before that knew my dad that worked at Roman Haas, so that really is special to me. Well, that is special that you are from here, you grew up here. It seems like you know everyone. What are some of your favorite memories of, you went to Sam Rayburn, right? I went to Sam Rayburn. Yeah, what are some of your favorite memories of growing up here in Pasadena? Well, a lot of it is, um, I went to South Shaver Elementary, mm -hmm. and I went to South Moore, and I went to Sam Rayburn. The neat thing I think about is I was involved in Girl Scouts for at least seven years, and the Girl Scout troop that I was involved in was over in the Queens area. And so I got to know a lot of people a little bit older than me, a little bit younger, their parents as well, that we did lots of things together, that then went on to Queens Intermediate and to Pasadena. So that really opened up the area of the whole more of Pasadena that I would have right. not Right, you known. get to know different people right. in different areas. In different areas. And so, yeah. As a child, as I would have not known <laughs> had I not traveled in that circle. <laughs> well, and Pasadena is, it's a lot bigger than it used to be, mm -hmm. and um, it is different than when we grew up, because we went to Raper and I went to Pasadena. Mm -hmm. and. But there's something about Pasadena that has always stayed the same. No matter what decade you're in, it's the people, mm -hmm. I would say. For sure. Um, what do you think makes Pasadena different from other cities, say from Houston or surrounding cities? What do we have that they don't? I think it's a sense of community for whatever reason. I think a lot of it is really volunteerism. We have a base of, well, just like for instance, uh, our first responders in the fire department, mm -hmm. that um, uh, largest fire department, volunteer fire department in the nation. Absolutely. Uh, right, and so um, that, we have so many nonprofit organizations that people spend their time doing things for others. Um, I just think we are blessed that we have a whole group of people in this area that feel that as a responsibility or a calling um, and that so many have been for so long involved like that. Well, and you've been involved. I mean, you there are so many uh, organizations and over the years, you know, I was doing a little bit of research on you okay. <laughs> and it's, there's lots of pictures of Jenny, lots of times where your name shows up in different, you were a Pasadena diplomat, yes, you've been involved um, with the Historical Society, yeah. I believe. Tell uh -huh. me some of the other things that are near and dear to you. Um, I know the Salvation Army is one that's near and dear to me. I'm uh, currently on their board. Um, it means a lot to me for a number of reasons. One is where I grew up on Monroe. Um, the captains at the time of the uh, Salvation Army, I think that would have been in the early 70s, uh, the Salvation Army was located off of Broadway, mm -hmm. uh, and Broadway being off of uh, Pesta Boulevard now, but Charter at that time, not too far from mm -hmm. 225. Yep. And uh, they lived behind me, and their daughter was my age. And I spent, even though I had my own church home, um, I spent a lot of time with them at the Salvation Army. And I saw them at their house, behind closed doors, how they were, and how they were, you know, with those people that they were ministering to mm -hmm. and helping at the Salvation Army. And it really have, has a deep place in my heart. So you saw behind the scenes and you saw the public yes. uh, pers persona, but yes. what really wasn't a persona. It mm -hmm. was the same. They were genuine. Yes. That's wonderful. For sure. So that's one of the several that really means a lot to me. I know another thing I'm involved in is at Philharmonic. Years ago, I was on the Philharmonic board, and now I'm on the Philharmonic board again. I kind of took a hiatus in the respect that my girls had gotten to an age. They were very, very busy, mm -hmm. involved with school things and extracurricular activities, as well as I'd gone back to school and working, so it didn't leave a whole lot of time for that. So I'm fortunate that I'm back on their board, and the Philharmonic means a lot to me because musically, I've always done things musically my entire life, and um, 
it just means uh, part of what my dad used to say is music is education. That is part, he always told me that was part of my education and he hoped that for everybody because it being an international language uh, and we have a global economy now. Mm -hmm. So we do. That's part of it. People, all people usually love music. And so regardless of what your, um, your language is, you can kind of communicate with others. Well, and you music. do sing. Um, I do. You've done the uh, Star Spangled Banner, you've sang for church. Uh, yes. So we can catch you sometimes. Well, a, a little bit, <laughs> yes. I, um, I was always involved in uh, choir as a kid in church, mm -hmm. as well as in school, junior high and high school. Uh, I was involved in numerous groups with that, and then now I'm involved in our, our church choir and praise team and I play the handbells. And, you know. <laughs> well, and one of the things that uh, you mentioned just a minute ago um, are our first responders. And then you also talked a little bit about when the girls were younger. And there was a period of time when you were on your own mm -hmm. because of something that happened that uh, for those of us who lived in past, mm -hmm. well, actually everybody knew the story. Tell us a little bit about the girl's dad, Jeff Ginn. Yes police officer. Yes. Um, Jeff was a uh, pest and police officer, killed on the line of duty in 1991. Our daughters were two and five at the time. Um, he had gone to Sam Rayburn as well. He was three years older than I. He graduated in 1980. Uh, he and I grew up in the same church together. I knew him from afar <laughs> when I was younger. <laughs> and then right after I had graduated not too long, we were in the uh, kind of uh, singles group together. Uh, and we got to know each other better, and that's when we started dating. And uh, we were married um, almost eight years when he was killed. And uh, yes, so I was on my own for a while. Uh, it was uh, a traumatic experience. Um, so, Jenny, going back to that day, what do you remember the most? Um, I know that that's probably something that uh, a lot of us have wondered about over the years. Um, what were you doing that day and how did you hear about it? I was at the house and um, I won't go into deep detail, but um, a girlfriend of mine had called and asked me um, if I'd heard that there was an officer in Pasadena that had gotten shot. And I had no idea and she figured I could find out because of my husband being an officer. We were very close friends forever. And um, anyway, it just went from there. And then uh, when the uh, chaplain came to my door to get me, um, the kids were with me and uh, uh, it just went from there. I, I just, it seemed like um, it wasn't real. And so um, after the fact and after everything mm -hmm. happened, um, I remember the community coming together. I remember something being out at the convention center mm -hmm. for you. Um, it was huge. And uh, the Pasadena community really rallied together for you, for your daughters. Mm -hmm. Um, I still, um, I still have people, even as recent as this weekend, tell me about that. I mean, maybe I'd known them at the time. Uh, maybe they didn't share it with me till later on. Uh, maybe this this one person I've known for quite some time, but they, I guess, just chose this time, or it came available to them, and they wanted to share that because they had young children, and at the time they didn't know me. Uh, but they saw that an officer had been killed with children, their children's ages. And so I've had that over the years numerous times. Like I said, people that knew me before that chose to share or that didn't know me that now we do know each other. And they said they, they will tell me their experience that affected their lives here in Pasadena. And it really is um, heartfelt from them and it really touches me because even though it was something horrific and something I would have not chosen, and not chosen for anybody else to have. Um, it is really nice that they can share that with me and, and make me know that part of that is a remembrance of him, a remembrance Absolutely. of Jeff Kim. And, and so, so that's how I try to look at it. And so you're a young mom with two daughters mm -hmm. and you meet another police officer named Jeff, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. which brings us to today. Yes. How did you and Mayor Wagner meet? Yes, um, actually we met through one of Jeff Ginn's lifetime uh, friends and best friend, actually. We met through him, and that was a uh, plus because it kind of gave it um, a stamp of approval, if you will, mm -hmm. um, on what kind of person he was, that he knew him before, of course, I knew him. And he was looking out for um, myself and the girls. And so I felt like that was, that uh, it all, when I look back at it, it looked, worked out uh, like that, yes. Um, 
I did go to have my head examined, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Because people were probably thinking, wait a minute, it's another Jeff, and he's another police officer, uh -huh. hello. Yes, yes. But, <laughs> but you can't pass him up. He's yeah, a winner, right? No, exactly. <laughs> it's like God pointed me to him, and I guess he, I, and it just, uh, uh, it was definitely, that's what worked it out, and that's it brought us together. Well, and he, he stepped in with, with your daughters. Yes. You know, Jillian and Jessica. I mean, uh -huh. he is their daddy. Yes. And of course, to the grandkids, yes. he's Pops. Yes. Tell us a little bit about how that relationship has been now that you're seeing him as a grandpa. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, it really blesses my heart because, of course, we didn't have children together. And when he loves my daughters so much and spends so much time with them and has the, uh, nothing but the best for them and spends time. Uh, with our grandkids, it just it just blesses me. It just makes my heart love him that much more, because I just uh, I know that he has nothing but good for them, and uh, he has done that for years now. And uh, that's what's so unique. Not to go back about that, but children understand a lot better than we do. And even at a young age, they knew that they had, as they say, a daddy that mm -hmm. wasn't here anymore. That was kind of looking out over them, but from up above. And then God blessed them, as they said in their words, with a daddy that uh, was here on earth that could be be with them. And so they understand that they, a lot better than most adults do, that um, they, it's an unfortunate situation, horrible situation, but something good can come of it because on the one hand, what choice do we have? Right. But we have to make it or mm -hmm. how would we go, go through? Well, well, and so, you know, time has, has gone on, mm -hmm. and did you ever imagine yourself as First Lady of Pasadena? No. Ever in your wildest dreams? No. What were you thinking, <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking when Jeff Wagner uh -huh. said, you know what, I think I'm going to run for mayor. Uh -huh. What were you thinking? Well, um, I wasn't as shocked as you might think because I've been with him so many years now, seeing him not only in his actual career and position as a servant and a servant leader and a servant, um, having a servant's heart, not only in his career, like I said, but at home and with his neighbors and friends and family, um, that's just him. And so it kind of became a natural progression. Uh, uh, that's uh, yeah, yeah. So I wasn't as shocked as you might think, right. but I never really thought like you just said about mm -hmm. first lady. I never even put thoughts on that. And you were thinking about him being mayor, exactly. not so much you being exactly. first lady. <laughs> I laughed and said, somebody said, "Oh, you're really working hard on this." I said, "Yes, because when someone I love deserves something, or they are going to be good at something, and they want that something, sure, I'm going to back them, and I'm going to work as hard as I can to help that to." come to fruition and I did the best that I could to and help him did do a that good job and <laughs> he will be the first to say you are his biggest cheerleader. Oh, okay. What has been your favorite moment so far with Mayor Wagner being in office? Favorite moment is to um, just see really well going back to Harvey when that happened just to really really see this community come together not just the city government or the city leadership but the churches and the nonprofit organizations of which there's many there again while well, it makes up the fabric of our community Pasadena um, the volunteers the people's hearts to come so that's been really and that was right out of the box what six weeks or maybe so mm -hmm. into his yeah, administration. Yeah he barely had time yeah. Yes and um, and just all the, the wonderful people that uh, do give up for themselves and so I had seen that before and I stepped back a little bit for a while um, like I said going mm -hmm. to school but now um, I get to see that all over again and up close and personal. And so I really see behind the scenes things that go on and it, um, it's awesome. It, that's, that is amazing. So what are some things that you would like to see happen while Jeff is mayor? Um, well, first and foremost is the unity of Pasadena. It wants all people of all socioeconomic, race, creed, color to know that we're unified in Pasadena, that we care regardless. It's about the spirit of That's Pasadena. That's exactly right. That's it's exactly about. right. We're all friends, we're all uh, in this together, in life together, and it doesn't matter where you come from or how long you've been here or uh, where you go from here, but um, we want it to be um, a great experience and a, a life for you to want to stay here and, and have your kids here and uh, 
Absolutely. be part of this community. We will never get tired of your energy and your commitment to Pasadena. And I just want to thank you so much for being with us today and just letting people get to know you. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it.